the euro dollar's inverting. We don't have a clue, and neither do you. Josh. Yeah. So we'll give it our best explanation of what we think Jeff Snyder was saying when he when he just tried to describe it, which I'm sure not too many people are understanding, and neither do we. So don't feel lost. So first yeah. we'll just pull up Jeff's. So basically, the euro dollar futures curve is inverting. Generally, to borrow money for a longer period of time, you have to pay more interest. So it's very strange when it costs less interest to borrow money for a long period of time than a short period of time. That's what's going on right now in the euro dollar funding market. It costs more to borrow money for the short term than it does for the long term. That makes no sense. Yeah. And and, and why doesn't it make sense? Let's just let's just talk about it from, from a super simple level. I, Justin, I want a million dollars from you. Okay. And oh, I think we should just stay friends. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry. here's the deal though. I'll, I'll pay it back. I'll I'll pay mm. it back in, in one month. If if I'm gonna pay it back in, in one month, how much how much would you ask me to give you? As, Considering as it's you? Oh, like a hundred percent. A thousand percent. How, yeah. how, how, how high can numbers go? But yeah, no, I see your point. I see your point. So see your point. after one month, let's say you ask me to give you, okay, you, I'll do it for a 1% interest. So after, after the time's up, I'll give you 10, I'll give you a million dollars, a million and 10,000. But if I say, Justin, I want to borrow money. I'm, I need a million dollars and I'll pay it back to you in, in 10 years. How much interest are you going to ask? Maybe you'll say, okay, well, 10 years, that's a long time down the road. I, my money's going to be tied up. Maybe I'll give you a 10% interest so, exactly. because there's a lot more risk the further out you go. Yeah, because you don't so, know what's going to happen. Even if you trust the counterparty, and let's say you think you've got like a government, a sovereign as the counterparty, you still don't know what's going to happen. Maybe in year seven, some crisis comes up where you need the money, but you can't necessarily get repaid because you still have three years left on the note before the notes do. Yeah. So it's it. this is such a big indicator when this happens. The last time it happened was in 2006, a few months later. You know what we all know what happened with a great financial crisis. Then again, in 2018, when we we were seeing these massive deflationary pressures, we had uh, the repo market spike, and then in March 2020, we had we had the Rona. I'm not saying that this is just this is signaling deflationary pressures. Yep, Josh. So as you say, this is signaling deflationary pressures. The way I interpret that in my own mind is that it signals first and foremost that banks don't want to lend. If banks aren't lending, that means new cash isn't being created. If new cash isn't being created, that means inflation's not being created. If inflation's not being created, then at best you're looking at disinflation or at worst, complete deflation. Yeah. But when we're talking about this, we're talking about in a monetary sense. We're not talking about supply chain issues. We're talking about in a what does a monetary sense of inflation mean? When when he's saying a deflation, he's talking about a decrease in economic activity. And that's the same thing with Snyder. When you hear Snyder say inflation or deflation, he's not talking about consumer goods. He's talking about economic activity. So when he's saying inflation is good, he's saying an increase in economic activity is good, which we would all agree with. Deflation is a decrease in economic activity. So if we're saying we're going to see a decrease in economic activity in the total money supply, where we have the euro dollar market, if which is a much bigger pie of M2 than we could even imagine, is actually decreasing in net total or not increasing in the rate that it should be, that's where we see that monetary deflation. I'm not saying, and Justin is sure as hell not saying, you're going to be paying less for bread at the store because... I'd say we both agree that there are supply chain issues that are going to continue to prop up the uh, onshore, in the, basically stagflation like the 1940s, where interest rates stay, stay low, but consumer goods continue to spike. Yeah. The other thing, too, that you might see is that you might have, let's say, one sector of the economy that would be very painful for all, let's say, food or perhaps buying gas for your car. You might see prices go up there, but you would see prices go down in another part of the economy that nobody would really care about, save the elite. Um, Clothes. It costs like a Picasso or whatever, you know, just something where your, your, your G5 will cost less to fuel up or something silly like that. Yeah. So the answer is if you go to the really, really, really high level, Technically, everything's staying the same, maybe disinflationary, maybe deflation. But for the person on the ground, the average person going to a grocery store, yeah, they're paying more. And they're paying more to an extent where they notice that they're paying yeah. more. And, and here's where something truly, a, a light bulb moment clicked when Snyder was saying that th it's such a big deal that bonds are as low as they are when inflation is high. If Right now, if you buy a 10-year yield yielding like 1.44% and inflation is running at 6% a year, you are guaranteeing a loss. You are stating right now, I'm going to lose 
a percentage of my of my purchasing power due to inflation, but I'm guaranteeing that 1.44% after 10 years. The fact that these banks are willing to guarantee a loss in the treasury market instead of lending into the into the private sector says enough. It's saying that these that these entities are unwilling to lend no matter the circumstance because they they think that they're not good for it. Just like Justin's example, Justin saying, Josh, you're my counterparty. Hell no, I'm not, I'm not lending to you. You're not going to pay me back. Even if they think that you're going to pay me back, let's say I'm a great business owner and I sell on average 1000 widgets a year, but the, they're seeing risks in the market where they're saying, well, I don't think, I don't think the demand for widget is going to be there next year. So I, it's not that your business is bad. I just think that the consumer won't have enough money to spend and buy your widgets, which means you won't be able to pay me back at the end of the, at the 10 years and I'll, I'll go bust. So the fact that they're buying treasuries, locking in a loss says enough about the state of the economy just right there. Yeah. And what I would say too, is that you've got this thing, uh, Gammon oftentimes makes the comment that you have the productive economy versus the non-productive economy. If the resources that would otherwise go into the productive economy to help businesses open new factories, beef up existing PPE, whatever, if this is suddenly diverted to go into the financial economy, this means the stuff we make in the real world is going to languish. And the stuff that we do in the financialized world, which necessarily isn't real per se, will, will be boosted. And at the end of the day, we are all going to be poorer for it because we will have less stuff. So Anyways, Josh, we started off this video talking about the euro dollar inverting. The conclusion from all of this is that for whatever odd reason, banks and otherwise sophisticated people who probably have more insight to the market than you or I or even our viewers do, is that they see something is coming on the horizon and they don't like it to the point where they are requesting more to loan money for the short term than they are for the long term. The historical track record of this indicator to predict trouble ahead is, I believe, Snyder said it was running at 100%. So it's not something to take lightly. But for the interim- This is a forward indicator, say, looking out for the next year, mm -hmm. uh, that that there's a crisis that is extremely probable. Yeah. And that, that means stocks could take a hit, asset classes in general. Where I disagree, and. Everything about this is, I think Snyder is bang on that we're not going to see the monetary style of inflation, but what's going to happen when this crisis hits? What's going to be the government's reaction when the, when when stocks get, when stocks crater 50% and people are crying in the streets but, because they can't afford anything because we're, we're run on a debt society? There's only one thing that I think the, the government's response is going to be, and that's going to be to create more actual dollars circulating in the economy, which will give another boost of inflation, which will then be just like the 1940s, where we see higher highs and higher lows of, of massive swings of yeah. the pendulum. And would you look at that? The Fed would suddenly have the excuse to do what they've always wanted to do. Isn't it just funny how that all seems to work out? Thank yeah. goodness we might have a potential savior.